if you want to sound smart in your next marketing meeting, then this video is for you. David Ogilvy is probably the most influential advertiser of the last two centuries. However, I often find that digital marketers, especially ones who learn their craft on the internet and social media, often shy away from his teachings and his learnings because they don't seem applicable. The truth is, is that Ogilvy probably did more for what became performance creative than any other marketer, even if his ads don't necessarily look like what converts today on social media. So in today's video, I'm going to show you five of Ogilvy's top advertisements and how knowing these ads can ultimately make you a better marketer, even on paid social. I'm also going to show you ads from today that use the exact same tactics as his ads. But first, who was this man who was Ogilvy? So Ogilvy was a British advertising tycoon. He was the founder of one of the top ad agencies that's still around, Ogilvy. He was known as the father of advertising. And something that I found that was interesting actually is he was a trained researcher at Gallup. And he attributed a ton of his success to the research he did on customers while developing these campaigns. He wrote on advertising. Honestly, I learned more from this book about advertising on paid social than literally any other book. Think about Ogilvy, you know, he was a real madman era type of guy. These are two of my favorite quotes by him. And I think that by looking at these quotes, you see, okay, this is a man who values testing and learning from those tests and deep research on the customer. Honestly, you guys, it's not, it's not sexy work, but it does work. So the first ad that I want to show you is this Rolls Royce ad. And there were two big lessons that I learned from on advertising that are present in this advertisement. Number one is that the headline is the most important part. He said on average that five times the amount of people that read the body copy read the headline. So it's imperative that your headline sticks out and is attracting the right types of people. Another thing that I learned from this ad, particularly again, zooming in on that headline, are that specifics work way better than generalities. And when looking at this headline again, David Breyer also spoke to this idea of the understated surprise. And I think that this also tugs at the human desire for intellect or looking like an intellectual. It is in fact a cool kind of party trick to know this kind of fact. And I know some of you are probably looking at this ad and you're thinking, wow, this is way too much text. Interestingly enough, long form primary text has actually been some of the top performing of my clients on Meta for several years now. And text only ads are on the rise as well right now in 2024. Ogilvy actually had a really interesting insight into why a lot of text works. His research shows that readership dropped off rapidly up to 50 words, but from 50 to 500 words that that drop off wasn't as significant. So if you're able to hook the right type of people with that headline and they start actually reading the long body text, those people that end up reading the entirety of it are highly qualified. Now there are several ads here that I have that are inspired by this idea of the understated surprise or of a great headline, but then we also have those ad creatives that are leaning into that idea of a lot more text and a lot more data for the right prospect to digest and then become qualified. Next up, we have the Hathaway shirt. And there's actually a really interesting backstory on this. Candidly, Hathaway shirts couldn't actually afford Ogilvy's services, but they agreed that they would give him complete creative control. They would never fire him and they would never change any copy. And what's particularly interesting about this ad creative is the man with the eye patch almost didn't even happen, but Ogilvy just had this idea idea, this gut instinct on the way to the photo shoot to pick up a 50 cent eye patch. And at the photo shoot, he asked the photographer, hey, just humor me, shoot a few of these. And from a few clicks that the photographer took at that shoot, that's what ended up becoming this ad creative. This is classic pattern interrupt. This would have been a completely normal ad campaign, except for this one thing that drew a lot of intrigue about the man, about the Hathaway man. I think this type of creativity is ripe for UGC creators to stand out and do that one extra thing with flair. Add something different, a surprise. I think this Obvi ad is a great example of that. The third ad, the man from Schweppes is here. Similar to the Hathaway ad, this creative focuses on a subject that people are innately curious about. In this instance, Ogilvy actually used an executive from Schweppes. He emulated this high class, new and exciting lifestyle. And this was also around the time where people were starting to travel more, travel on planes. And he was this man from England and it kind of gave off this air of like you become a little bit more like this high-class luxurious man who is well-traveled 
if you have this drink. Now, I think that this ad creative is super similar to founders ads and why they work. Pulling back the curtain, especially in 2024, is super important for brands to survive. I've seen this several times where the founder account on TikTok will perform way better than the brand account. And that's because people wanna know people. They don't really care about the brand. They want the behind the scenes story. Zach Stuck actually has this top performing ad creative of him just walking around in his warehouse that was a top performer for him recently. The truth is, is that this idea of the founder's ad and pulling back the curtain, it's nothing new. Number four is this infamous Dove ad. There are three big things I think every advertiser should know about this ad. Number one, it's a masterclass in positioning. They could have just sold a hand bar of soap, but instead they positioned it as a beauty bar for women. And this is something that I often encourage the brands that I work with. How could we potentially alter the positioning of the brand to really hit home in a market? Like Hinge, which is the app to be deleted. Liquid Death, which by the way is just water. And then there's also things like Dude Wipes or Get Dirty. All of these brands have done a really good job at positioning themselves and aligning with a certain market so that they were able to succeed. The second thing that I think is really interesting is that this was actually an industry that Ogilvy did not like working in. And even though he says it's really excruciating to write an ad for a market that he's not interested in, he was particularly not interested in beauty and lipstick and face powders. And I consider this beauty for sure because it's now a beauty bar. I do think that it's really interesting that he was still able to make something that was wildly successful and began a more than 65 year partnership. In fact, 20 years ago, when they did the real beauty campaign and used real people in their advertisements, that was Ogilvy's advertising agency that did that. Now, the third thing about this ad that I think is important to know is particularly one word that is in the headline, the use of the word darling. As a part of the research process, they actually took a group of people and flashed words on a screen and they measured the emotional responses to that. And they realized that darling was one of those words that had a high emotional response. And that's why Ogilvy decided to use it in the headline for Dove. And the fifth one, you guys always get on me for not doing enough B2B ads, so I consider this Puerto Rico ad a B2B ad. And essentially the task that Ogilvy had was to bring more businesses and industries to Puerto Rico. Ogilvy actually said that this was the most effective advertisement he's ever written. Interestingly enough, he spent 10 days in confinement writing this ad, which is a bit excessive. And I think one of the big lessons that I have here too goes back to that idea of statistics, utilize facts, utilize numbers. This is also something that the Rolls Royce ad did, right? And I found that this is actually more of a necessity in B2B. This ad campaign was actually so successful that Ogilvy ended up revitalizing it in 2009. And they did a refresh on this campaign. A big learning here too, as far as forming headlines is your headline should position the benefit. The Dove ad did this too, right? But inside of all these headlines and all these statistics, they presented a benefit for industries to move to Puerto Rico. And that's it. If you learned something, please be sure to give me a like and subscribe. This isn't the normal type of content I do, but I really enjoyed doing it and doing the research for it. So if you liked it, please be sure to let me know in the comments so I can make more content like this. And I'll see you next week. Bye.